do not hear right cannot speak right. Have you ever noticed that deaf people talk funny? They talk funny because they hear funny. You talk funny when you hear funny. I have failed far more times than I've succeeded. Far more. You, you will never succeed more than you fail. That's not how it works. You know why? Because failure is a wonderful teacher. It's the only way to learn. You have to fail. Failure is a part of the process to becoming successful. I tell people this all the time. Michael Jordan, the greatest basketball player in the world, he took 946 game-winning shots. 946 times since he was in high school, the ball has been in his hand to take the game-winning shot with no time on the clock. He has only made 146 of those. He has missed over 700 times, but he has made 146. You know what they write about? Did he make it? They write about when you make it. So guess what? When you get through failing, 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 all you got to do is make one. All you got to do is make one. I've had in my career probably a total of, I've been to over 200 pitch meetings to pitch ideas in Hollywood. Out of those 200, they have picked five of them. 200 meetings, 200 show ideas, they've picked five of them. But you know what them five was? Hits. So you know what they made me? A star. I only had five. I only hit five. The rest of the shows I had somebody thought of and asked me to be on the show, and I might have turned it into a hit. But I've only been picked, five, five of my ideas got picked. In 33 years, five ideas got picked. All I need is five hits, that's all. Y'all don't even know I was in them other meetings. They don't write about it, they just write about my hits. You just need a hit, man. So when you fail, it's a part of the process. Keep going, you're supposed to fail. Shit, who you know that gets it right all the time? That's impossible. You have to fail. Matter of fact, when you fail, be glad about it. Every time you fail, you're one step closer. So every time you fail, say, whew, got that out the way. Go to the next one. Fail again, okay, I got two out the way. What's gonna happen is if you just keep, keep swinging, you're gonna get a hit. A baseball player gets paid millions and millions of dollars for a 300 batting average. That means out of every 10 times he goes to the plate, he only hits the ball three times. They're millionaires. They only hit it three times. Man, please. While the people are giving up, feeling like victims, feeling powerless, becoming negative, turning on each other rather than to each other, feeling that they can't make it. Be ye not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind with the mindset of that it's possible that we can save this generation. It's possible that we can create new industries, a new economy. It's possible that I can find a new profession, a new job. It's possible I can create a new life. And it's necessary that I become actively involved in becoming a positive force in my life and on the planet. And it's me, yes, it's you. It's all of us pulling together, working together to create this brand new future. And it's going to be hard. Easy is not an option. But if it's hard, we will do it hard. Whatever is required to snatch victory from the jaws of defeat. And it's worth it, yes. It's worth whatever we have to do. And once we know that, it is done. It is done. It is done. I say to you, whatever your dreams are, whatever you want to do, in the spirit of Jack, march forth. I know most people don't make definite plans, but don't let that be you. The guy says, well, you work where I work, but the time you get home, it's late. You've got to have a bite to eat, watch a little TV, and get to bed. You can't sit up half of the night and plan, plan, plan. And this is the guy who's behind on his car note. He's a good worker, hard worker, sincere. But I've discovered that you can be sincere and work hard all your life and wind up broken, embarrassed. You've got to be better than a good worker. You've got to be a good planner, a good goal setter. You've heard the old saying, the people who fail to plan are planning to fail. It's true. So work on your plans. Put yourself in the top few percent who put this power to work for themselves. Writing your goals down also shows you are serious. And to do better, you must get serious. You don't have to be grim, but you do have to be serious. Hey, everybody hopes things will get better, but remember, the future does not get better by hope. It gets better by plan. And hope unaided by clear plans can finally become an illness. There's a Bible phrase that says, hope long delayed makes the heart sick. It's a sickness. I used to have the illness known as passive hope. It's bad. And there's one that is even worse, and that is called happy hope. That is really bad. The man is 50, and he's broke, 
and he's still smiling. I'd like to share with you some further observations I've made on goal setting. Understand that your goals, whatever they are, are affecting you all day long. Your goals affect your handshake, your attitude, how you feel. Your goals affect how you look, how you dress, how you walk, how you talk, all day, every day. Your personality, conversation, activity, it's all affected by your goals. I asked a man one time, what are your goals for this month? And he said, if I could just scrape up enough money to pay these lousy bills, that was his goal. Hey, I'm not saying it isn't a goal. It is, but it's such a poor goal. It certainly isn't inspiring. You don't jump out of bed on Monday morning and say, oh boy, another chance to go out and scrape up the money to pay these lousy bills. The point is that goals should be fun. They should be big, challenging, rewarding. They should allow you to grow. Remember too, that the major purpose of having a goal is not just to acquire the goal. The major reason for setting goals is to compel yourself to become the person it takes to achieve them. In other words, attaining the goal is of secondary importance. What's far more important is what you become in the pursuit of it. The greatest value in becoming a millionaire, for example, is not the million dollars. The greatest value is the skills, the knowledge, the discipline, and the leadership qualities you acquired in becoming a millionaire. It's the experience you acquired in planning, development, strategy. It's other qualities you acquired, such as courage, commitment, and willpower to attract a million dollars. You could lose everything you attained, but you could not lose the skills, knowledge, and experience you have obtained. Even better than having is being. Here's a most important question to spend some time answering. What kind of person will I have to become to get all I want? Write down a few thoughts on that. Write down some skills you'll have to develop, for example, and some of the things you're going to have to learn. Just spend a little time writing a few sentences on this. What kind of person will I have to become to get all I want? The answer to this will give you some personal development goals. Remember that income does not far exceed personal development. All of us have to do this kind of self-examination. I have to look at my own life and say, well, here's what I want, but am I willing to become what it takes to get what I want? If I'm too lazy, if I don't want to learn, read, study, and grow to become that kind of person, then I cannot attract what I want. Now, either I have to change my wants or I have to change myself. Here are a few more key points I'd like to share with you on goals and designing your future. First, if you don't right now feel as if you're equipped to get all you want, just remember, ability will grow to match your strong dreams. That's why the goal setting process we've discussed is so important. The more you work on this, the more ideas you will get on how you can change, how you can grow. I am nowhere near the person I was when I met Mr. Shope 25 years ago. I'm not that person anymore. I've changed. There's nothing you can do about the past, but you can do a great deal about your future. You don't have to be the same person you were yesterday. You can make changes in your life, absolutely startling changes in a fairly short period of time. You can make changes you can't even conceive of now. If you give yourself a chance, your abilities will grow. You have untapped talents and potential that you haven't even reached for yet. Live your life from truth and you will survive everything, everything. I believe even death. You will survive everything if you can live your life from the point of view of truth. You will be wounded many times in your life. You'll make mistakes. Some people will call them failures. But I have learned that failure is really God's way of saying, excuse me, you're moving in the wrong direction. It's about opening your space, your heart space, so that you can love more. You know, that's really all money is for. Money's worth nothing if it can't buy you the opportunity to love more. For me, luck is preparation, meeting the moment of opportunity. There is no luck without you being prepared to handle that moment of opportunity. And so what I would say for myself is, is that because of my hand, in a hand and a force greater than my own, I have been prepared in ways that I didn't even know I was being prepared for. I, I'm, I'm always connecting to an idea. I'm, I'm always asked, why am I making this? 
What, why, so I'm putting this out in the world, why? What I realized is that the only sustainable mission um, throughout your whole uh, existence is to improve lives. And as soon as I made the shift in my mind from trying to be big and trying to have money and trying to be popular to making sure that I improve lives every step of the way on this earth, then all of a sudden I started experiencing healing. If you're scared, you're not going to take the chances that you need to take to, to realize your dreams. And that was the thing for me. I don't mind being scared, but I'm still going to do it. Life is hard, right? Like, yeah, you might get hurt. It's yeah. like, you know, you're, you, you're, your heart might get broken, you know? It's like you might lose your job, but you still got to commit, you know? Hey. You got to commit, right? You know what I mean? You know, you meet somebody and you, hey, you know, you like her and she likes you and you're hesitating. Don't hesitate. Go. Commit. You got to commit. You know, you might get hurt. You might lose something. But it's like you can't experience the, the joy that is intended for you in life if you don't go. The dreams that I have is I, I want to be valuable. Like I want to be valuable to humanity. I want to, you know, I haven't totally found my calling as of yet, but I want my life to be of value to as many people and in as many ways as possible. And understanding that really changed the meaning of my life in that I was not no longer driven by what other people wanted me to do, but took charge of my own destiny, making choices based upon what do I feel is the next right move for me. And as that shift happens in you, you'll be feeling the world be by it. You'll be embraced by it. Now I'm always at the beginning. I have a reset button and I ride that button constantly. Once that button is functioning in your life, there's no story that the mind could create that will be as compelling. It's an interesting thing about life I've also found that if you don't have the courage to act, sometimes and particularly if you have something special to do, life will move on you. I, if, 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 if it were not for life, I would still be a disc jockey. I didn't just leave voluntarily to go to the state legislature. I was fired. I was working on a job and I came home one day. I was married at the time and I told my former wife, I said, that guy Bert I work for is stupid. She said, if he's so stupid, Stupid, why does he sign your paycheck? Now you see why I divorced her, right? I couldn't stand her. That night, I could not sleep well. Here was a guy that was controlling my life. I was going through all kinds of changes because this man controlled my paycheck. And it was Carlisle who said, truth crushed to earth shall rise again. Winston Churchill said, the truth is incontrovertible. Malice may attack it, ignorance may deride it, but at the end, there it is. And we know scripture that says, ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. And the truth that I had to come to grips with, that I wasn't in charge of my destiny. The truth was that I wasn't giving all that I had. The truth was that there are some things that I wanted to do, but I didn't have the courage to act on those things. And the truth was that Bert Childs was a blessing to me. He made life so miserable for me, I had to start looking at my life differently. I started going to work earlier. I started being the last one to leave there. I started working harder than anybody else. The other guys could not, why would you work so hard, Les? I said, I'm not working for them. I have been cheating, Bert, I thought. I've been cheating myself and my family, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, do it with everything that you have. Develop the habit of giving more than what you're paid for. Develop the habit of, of setting standards that others will be measured by. Someone said, do not go where the path may lead, but go where there's no path and leave a trail. You know, we live in a world where opposites are in conflict and we're in the middle. There's the pull to do good and the pull to do evil, to do what's right, or the pull to cross the line. That bit of warfare goes on even in our own head, our own consciousness. When I was a little kid growing up, I remember this cartoon of a little boy, and it showed this little boy with a little devil on one shoulder and a little angel on the other shoulder. 
The little devil said to the little boy, go ahead and do it, it'll be okay, it'll be fine, go ahead, go ahead. The little angel saying, no, 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 don't do it, don't do it. The little devil said, yes, go ahead. The little angel voice, no, no. And I guess that's part of our life experience. It's part of the adventure. The old prophet said, love good and hate evil. And if we become educated in that way, knowing when the voice of temptation is not the right road to take, we make some better choices. When I got up this morning, a little voice said, you really don't have to do your exercise today. You could skip today. You've got some work to do. And I got in at about one o'clock this morning on my airline flight from Colorado Springs. But as recently as this morning, the little voice said, you don't have to do them this morning. But I well know that if I postpone a day, sure enough, I've got to make up for it somewhere. Maybe do a modified version if I don't have quite enough time, but don't let it just go. But we all have that. You know, that's fairly constant, what voice to listen to. I guess part of the answer is not to become a victim of yourself. Beware of the thief on the street that's after your purse, but also beware of the thief in your mind that's after your promise. The little thief in your head that says, you're too tall, you're too short, you've never done it before. For. It's not going to happen for you. Others can find this book. You can't find it. If you found it, you probably wouldn't read it. If you read it, you probably wouldn't understand it. This is a constant bit of warfare going on inside of our head. So we all have to deal with that. But what I call that in these experiences is the great adventure.
We're affected by how we feel. First, we're affected by what we know and the decisions we make. Second, we're affected by attitude, how we feel. And I gave that quick list. Let me give it to you. It's how you feel about the past. You've got to have a good attitude about the past. Use it as a school, not a club. Don't beat yourself to death with your past. Falls, failures, losses. Let the past be a school. Harsh school, maybe. What else is new? Let the past be a school master to teach you. Not to threaten you, but to teach you. Next, it's how you feel about the future. Set your goals. Promise of the future is an awesome force to affect your life every day. Without a future well designed, we take hesitant steps. And all you have to have is hesitant steps for six years. You'll be timid, driven into a corner, not boldly willing to go and take your portion, take your share. Next, it's how you feel about everybody else. Got to have a good attitude about everybody else because it takes everybody else to make a market. One person doesn't make a family. One person doesn't make a business. One person doesn't make a corporation. One person doesn't make a community. And here's the last one. It's how you feel about yourself. Understanding self-worth is the beginning of progress. Self-worth should be easy. If one of us can do it, all of us can do it. If anybody can think it, we all can think it. I can read, you can read. I can understand, you can understand. From where I came from, the few simple things I did and tried revolutionized my life in five years. There isn't anybody here that can't do it. Change from pennies to fortune. Change from nothing to something. Change from broke to rich. Anybody in this room can do it. If any of us can do it, we all can do it. That's the kind of value you should place on yourself. If Jim Rohn can understand it, I can understand it. If he can read, I can read. If he can find it, I can find it. If he can change, I can change. If you can get it done, I can get it done. That's the attitude about yourself. So valuable. Now, in transforming our lives, we don't start with attitude. We don't start with the inspiration here. We start with education. Somebody says, well, I expected you just come get motivated today. Well, that probably won't do it. Somebody says, by now, we should be standing on the chairs, waving a flag, singing the old gray mare, get going here. No, that's not where you start. Life change does not start with inspiration. Life change starts with education. You've got to be educated to the point of where you might have messed up. My teacher put it in blunt, simple language. He only went to the ninth grade in school, so he put it in simple language I could understand. He said, Mr. Owen, after six years living in America, healthy American male, 25 years old, been working six years, one year of college, pennies in your pocket, nothing in the bank. Schultz said, I just got one simple explanation for that. You've messed up. Now, I could understand that kind of language. Should walk around the block, could walk around the block, won't walk around the block. You have messed up. And all you've got to go is right down through the list. Don't need some teacher to come by and tell you. Be your own best teacher saying, hey, let me make a list of some places I've messed up. Because if I let this down, let this down, that probably affects the rest. And the answer is, that's true. So we don't start with inspiration. We start with education. Somebody says, well, just motivate this guy. He'll be all right. Just motivate him. Get him turned on. Probably not. The guy's an idiot. You motivate him. Now you got a motivated idiot. No, he won't be all right. So we start with education. What's the first education? If it isn't going well and you live in America, you have... Messed up. You don't need to change countries. Activity. This is the work part. The labor part. Taking action. And the activity is the miracle working piece. A miracle being something we don't quite understand how it works. Doesn't mean it doesn't work. It means we just don't quite understand how it works. Miracles work. God says. Now, I'm an amateur on God, but here's my best analysis. God says. If you'll plant the seed, I'll make the tree. Now, that's a good arrangement. Number one, gives God the tough end of the deal. What if you had to make the tree? That'd keep you up late night trying to figure out. How do you make a tree? Say, no, I'm telling you, the mystery and the miracle of this stuff has already been set up. God says, I got the miracle going. I got the seasons going. I got some sunshine and some rain, and I'm God. But the way I've arranged that, I just need somebody to plant the seed, not chant. In California, they're trying to chant to get this stuff done. Forget this California stuff. 
Don't have to rub a crystal and sleep under a pyramid. This stuff's too easy. Getting rich is too easy. Changing your life is too easy. Forget all that. Massive bombard, affirmation, forget all that. My opinion. Just simple, easy stuff. But if you neglect it, that's how it piles up year after year. But if you're willing to straighten it out, and here's one of the keys. It's called activity. It's called disciplines. Turning wisdom from your philosophy and inspiration, the strengthening of attitude, and faith, and courage, commitment, and all this stuff that comes from attitude. If you're willing to take these two qualities, philosophy and attitude, and invest it into activity, you can have a miracle. Anything short of that, no miracle. Wisdom doesn't perform a miracle. Attitude doesn't perform a miracle. The only thing that performs a miracle of increase called equity is called putting wisdom and attitude into discipline, into labor. And this labor now can perform a miracle. And here's the two parts to the labor. One, do what you can. Number two, do the best you can. Can't give you better advice than that. Number one, do what you can. You just got to go home and make a list after today. And here's the question to ask as you make this personal list. What am I not doing that would be easy to do? That could greatly change my health, my wealth. What am I not doing I'm neglecting that would be easy to do? Just go home and answer that question personally. You don't have to put the answers on a public bulletin board. This is just all personal stuff. Errors in judgment, disaster. A few simple disciplines, wealth beyond imagination. And if you'll pick up the activity part, the miracle working part, Plant the seed part. Take care of your part. The soil will take care of its part. The seed will take care of its part. The seasons will take care of their part. The miracle will take care of its part. If you'll take care of your part, call putting it into activity, action. Works miracles. One of Jesus' disciples said to Jesus, it's time to pay our taxes and we don't have any money. To this statement by his disciple, Jesus said, best as I can read the record, Jesus said, no problem. Now, why could he say no problem? Well, word has it, word has it, he was a miracle worker. If you handed a problem to a miracle worker, what would he be inclined to say? No problem. You got to hang out with folks like that. I belong to a small group like that. We do business around the world. You hand these guys a problem, they say no problem. What? How many books would they read to solve it? information would they get? As much as they needed. So it's what? No problem. You've got to hang out with folks like that. Jesus said, this will be no problem, the tax thing. He said to his disciples, it's simple, go fishing. Wow. Now that was easy for this particular disciple. His name was Peter. And Peter was a fisherman. How clever. How clever. But here's the real problem. If you should fish, and you could fish, and you don't fish, you got no miracle. You could change, you should change, you won't change. That's called accumulated disaster. In six years, you'll be explaining instead of celebrating. Having some ragged list like I had, reasons for not doing well pennies in my pocket. Could, should, don't do that. And if you'll just start the process of change, could, 
should and will you can start this whole process and if you will then put it into action the miracle belongs to you Jesus said to his disciple it'll be simple go fishing and the first fish you catch look in his mouth Peter said okay he was used to strange things happening in this relationship Peter goes fishing catches the first fish looks in his mouth guess what's in the fish's mouth coins Peter says wow coins starts counting the value of these coins and when he adds it up guess how much it added up to exactly enough money to pay his taxes and Jesus tax now we call that what a miracle only because we don't quite understand how it works it doesn't mean it doesn't work it simply means we don't quite understand how it works but here's how you get a miracle going for your life number one do what you can get a list of the stuff you could do you haven't done postpone and start cleaning that up you can't start at a better place for personal change. It'll affect your bank account, affect your future, affect your income, affect everything. You can't start. a better life change process than cleaning up what you should be doing and don't walk like other people walk don't postpone like other people postpone you don't need massive bombard pre-conscious subconscious practice channeling find a 2,000 year goal guru I mean you don't need any of that stuff pass on all that kids are afraid of that stuff this stuff's too easy this stuff's too simple call take action number one on neglect on errors in discipline number two start setting up some discipline and if you'll do that you'll perform a miracle now here's the second part of the miracle number one is do what you can here's number two do the best you can if that's not your philosophy I would ask you to amend it let me give you the best of ancient script here's what it says whatever your hands find to do do it with all your might do it with all your strength and do it with all your power what a good philosophy that kind of philosophy revolutionize your life if you haven't picked it up lately. Time is short. What is your life? It's even a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanisheth away. Opportunity comes in chaos. A chance to stand up. A chance to get it right. A chance to make a U-turn. It may not be for everybody. It is how you perceive the chaos, whether you determine it to be opposition or opportunity. Time also calls for immediate action. The fact that time is short calls for something now may not be a tomorrow for you because there's a warning to time time is running out for all of us time is too short for indecision and vacillation do not halt between two opinions fools say that time is long the saddest thing i have ever seen is a wasted opportunity i've seen people misunderstand the opportunity pollute it with arrogance or self-aggrandizement and lose the opportunity and that's what's going to make your death so sad is that you never live first. You never fully engaged. You never fully studied. You never fully invested in anything or anybody. You want to get something that you are not willing to give. You have never been joined. You just wore the dress, got the plaque. They threw the rice. You took the job. 
but you've never seen what you could be if you threw your whole self at your dream. You have to have a made up mind that you are in it for the long haul. It may be difficult, you have a good reason to walk away, don't take the easy way out. Stay committed to your dreams. Don't give up on the promises God put in your heart. It may be taken longer than you thought, but God is still on the throne. Stay committed to your job. Be a loyal person, somebody they can count on day in and day out. You're not always going to feel like it. There will be good days and tough days. That's when you have to dig your heels in and say, I'm going to do the right thing when it's hard. I'm committed to this job. I'm going to be my best even though my supervisor isn't treating me right. I'm committed to my dreams. I'm not going to give up because I don't see anything happening. I'm going to keep believing, expecting, thanking God. I know it's on the way. God rewards consistent, faithful, committed people. Some of your goals should be personal development. The person you wish to become Develop skills that make you attractive to the marketplace. Develop the temperament and the attitude that makes you attractive to the business world. The attitude and the temperament that makes you a splendid father, studying the art. Because here's what's important. It's not what you get that makes you valuable. It's what you become that makes you valuable. And that's how you must be. Commitment means standing up for your life. It means honoring yourself. It means beginning to say and to, to see and recognize your alignment and oneness with the universe. And that you are a channel for life to express through. And we short circuit it with anger. We short circuit it with fear. We short circuit it by being lazy or apathetic or giving up easily. Why, why, why? We say, oh, it's too hard, it's too hard. We don't challenge our spirit. Ladies and gentlemen, there's nothing as powerful as the human spirit. You can't destroy it. You can pervert it, but you can't destroy it. So beware of what you become, pursuing what you want. Some things I went for in the very beginning cost me too much. I got so obsessed with some things that I found out later the price was too big to pay. If I would have known better, I never would have paid. But sometimes we learn when, after. So don't become so obsessed with something that you lose your sense of reason or it costs you your friends. Don't be so obsessed with something that you compromise your virtues and your values. Listen to me. You have been given an opportunity. You have been given an opportunity of a lifetime. And if you think you're going to blow up, if you think you're going to get to the next level by luck, you got another thing coming. It may not be for everybody, but what God has given to you is an opportunity. This is an opportunity. By not being prepared, you make the choice of getting caught in some of life's unpleasant circumstances. Failures, economic losses, relationship losses, personal losses. By not being prepared, it's your choice. Now here's the other side of it. By being prepared, you increase your chances of success, of seizing opportunities when they come your way, of being ready within yourself to take advantage of once-in-a-lifetime situations. Some people tend to blame others for their mistakes. Somebody says, it's not my fault the report isn't done. So-and-so didn't do their part. Of course it's your fault. It's your report too. It's your responsibility to see that everyone you delegated work to does their part. Now you can't control what others around you do, but it's in your own best self-interest that you stay on top of things, especially if it's going to affect your future. Concentration takes a lot of discipline. Concentrate on the work at hand and demand of yourself the discipline to stay focused. If you have a long list of things to get done within a day, do the toughest ones while your concentration is at its peak. If you're a morning person, get the job done in the morning. Don't wait until the evening when your energy is all spent. If you're a night person, save those tough jobs for the night, not in the morning when you've still got cobwebs in your brain. Learn your body's rhythms. 
and do the jobs that need the most concentration when you're able to do them best. When you're at work, be at work. When you're at your kid's school play or soccer game or dance recital, be there. Don't let your mind wander. Stay focused. Don't let your mind wander during conversations. You never know what important points you'll miss. Stay focused. Use your discipline to keep your mind in line. When you recognize the need to concentrate more, when you recognize this need, it will come easier and easier. Focused concentration can become a habit. If you work on it a little every day, every day, every day, the easier it comes, the less energy you'll waste on making your mind mind you. Number one cornerstone of an ambitious person. Concentration. Focused. Concentration. Make your mind pay attention. Discipline yourself to be where you are. Work at work and play at play. Don't mix the two. Concentrate. Give your job the attention it deserves. Give your family the attention they deserve. Wherever you are, be there. Concentrate. When you look at over 33 million people have lost their job, it's greater than the last depression the unemployment rate. This is unprecedented. There, this trauma that's going on all across the country and things are happening globally. It affects all of us. There are things that we can do and things that we must do to pick ourselves up and move ourselves forward. Success is not final and failure is not fatal. We all have the challenge to search deep within ourselves to find our inner hunger, which is our power. When things go wrong, we have to find ways to anchor ourselves. We cannot allow ourselves and give ourselves permission to go with them. And so if your life isn't everything it could be, you could ask yourself, well, what would happen if you just stopped wasting the opportunities that are in front of you? You'd be, who knows how much more efficient, 10 times more efficient. You have no idea how efficient, efficient people get. Well, and if we all got our act together collectively and stop making things worse, because that's another thing people do all the time, not only do they not do what they should to make things better, they actively attempt to make things worse because they're spiteful or resentful or arrogant or deceitful or homicidal or genocidal or all of those things all bundled together in an absolutely pathological package. If people stopped really, really trying just to make things worse, we have no idea how much better they would get just because of that. So there's this weird dynamic that's part of the existential system of ideas between human vulnerability, both of which are, are major causes of suffering, and the failure of individuals to adopt the responsibility that they know they should adopt. You know, there's this idea that people have a conscience. And you know what the conscience is. It's, it's this feeling or voice you have in your head just before you do something that you know is stupid, telling you that probably you shouldn't do that stupid thing. You don't have to listen to it, strangely enough. But you go ahead and do it anyways, and then, of course, exactly what the conscience told you was going to happen inevitably happens so that you feel even stupider about it than you would if it happened by accident. Because you, you know, I knew this was going to happen, and I went and did it anyways. And the funny thing, too, is that that conscience operates within people, and we really don't understand what the hell that is. Now, my approach to my better future very early on in my career was to just go through the day with my fingers crossed. I sure hope things will change for the better. Then here's what I found out. They're not going to change. When you change, when you get better, it'll get better. If you change, it'll all change. Don't put it on someone else. Hope that someone else will change it for you. Take responsibility for yourself. You can't change the circumstances or the seasons or the wind, but you can change your reading habits. You can change whether or not you go for the skills. Multiply your value by two, three, five, ten. That you've got charge of. That you have control of. You don't have control of the constellations. Learn some new skills. You have control over that. 
And if you don't, that's your fault. You've got to take personal responsibility. You've got to be self-reliant. Nobody else can change your life, alter your ambitions, pave a golden road for you. It's up to you. Be responsible for yourself. Learn to reap the harvest without complaint. And here's where it comes from, taking full responsibility. Take full responsibility for everything you do. Be responsible to yourself. It's your crop. Potential is an interesting idea because it represents something that isn't yet real, yet we act like it's real. Because people will say to you, you should live up to your potential. And that potential is partly what you could be if you interacted with the world in a manner that would gain you the most information. Because you build yourself out of the information in the Piagetian sense. But it's deeper than that too because we know that if you take yourself and you put yourself in a new environment, new genes turn on in your nervous system. They encode for new proteins. You're full of biological potential that won't be realized unless you move yourself around in the world into different challenging circumstances and that'll turn on different circuits. It's that by exposing yourself to different environments, you put different physiological demands on yourself all the way down to the genetic level and that manifests new elements of you. Because you take yourself out of your dopey little village and that's just the little bounded you that everyone knows and that isn't very expanded and then you go somewhere dark and dangerous to the central place and while you do that you have adventures and they toughen you and pull more out of you partly because you're becoming informed which means information it means you're becoming more organized at every level of analysis but there's also more of you too.